Joining me now is California Congressman Ro Khanna, who, was, who also just returned from a trip to rural areas in key states to promote high-tech jobs. And we'll talk about that in a moment. Congressman, thank you very much for coming back to the show. What moved you to issue such a strong and vocal call for Senator Feinstein to step down? Jonathan, I have a lot of respect for Senator Feinstein's public service. But we just heard from the CEO of Planned Parenthood, we're in a crisis in this country, a crisis of an assault on voting rights and women's rights. We have a rogue judge, a single judge, who is taking away the abortion pill from women. You have an appellate court that is saying you can't mail that pill to women. The single biggest thing this president can do with the Republican House is confirm judges. And Senator Durbin has said, that we're not being able to confirm judges every day that goes by because Senator Feinstein is unable to be there. And I just think for the good of the country, for confirming these judges, uh, let's have someone who can vote. And part of the problem is, in a, without Senator Feinstein, there's an even split between Republicans and Democrats. And as a result, nothing can happen as long as there is a 50-50 split. Uh, Congressman, what's been the reaction from other Democrats to, to your vocal call? Quite a few people have said in private, uh, texted, saying they agree with that. I know Senator Feinstein has said, can she temporarily come off the Judiciary Committee? That could be a solution, but the problem with that is it requires Republican uh, consent. And every day that goes by, and I think this is what's important to understand, is one day less that this president has to appoint a judge to push back against the assault on women's rights and voting rights. I think many colleagues are hoping she will come to the conclusion her own. They have a lot of respect for her. They don't want to push her in a corner. Uh, but they're hoping that she will make this decision to have dignity uh, in ending a, a distinguished career. Uh, real quickly, one more question on this. Uh, I saw on the front page of the Los Angeles Times a couple of days ago, lead story, um, if, if Senator Feinstein steps down, pressure will mount um, on Governor Newsom to fulfill his pledge to um, replace her with a black woman. Are you confident that Governor Newsom will keep that pledge? Yes, I am. And look, I'm biased. I just want to disclose the co-chair for Barbara Lee because she's one of the most extraordinary people uh, in modern American history, the most consistent anti-war voice. But whether the governor appoints a caretaker uh, or her, he should appoint an African-American woman. And let's just be clear, there's not a single African-American woman in the United States Senate in 2023. That should be an embarrassment uh, to our country. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk about your, your travels uh, outside your district. I mean, your, your district is right in the middle of Silicon Valley in California, but you've been traveling to rural areas of states like South Carolina, Iowa, and Pennsylvania to talk about tech. You told the Washington Post that your passion is ensuring that people in rural or industrial America, America have strong middle-class jobs in an economy dominated by tech. How have people in these rural parts of the country responded to your push for tech jobs? Students have been inspiring. I was just with uh, Leader Clyburn at Benedict College in South Carolina oh, yesterday yeah, morning. There. there are 20 students. They're getting paid $5,000 stipend, 18-month course. They're going to get a job up to $100,000. Uh, it's life-changing for many of these students. And one of the points that was made there is the African-American community, as you know, Jonathan, was excluded from the agricultural revolution excluded from the Industrial Revolution. They shouldn't be excluded from the Digital Revolution. I, I once had the honor with the late John Lewis of writing an op-ed together where John Lewis said technology rights are the new civil rights. And we were also in rural Iowa, rural Pennsylvania. The point is whether you want to go into manufacturing, healthcare, television, retail, technology is going to be a big part of it. And so, last question for you, Congressman Khanna. On these visits, what have you heard from the folks you talked to? Did other issues like guns or abortion or drag queen story hour come up? Well, the uh, irony is in rural Pennsylvania and Allegheny, we had the most eloquent testimonial from a trans female uh, student. And she talked about how she was making $26,000 a year and now will be making $60,000 a year. I actually didn't even know that she was trans until at the end she talked about how this program has stood up for her rights and given her, her a safe place to work. And what's so sad is instead of talking about giving people opportunities and taking advantage of their talent, 
we're stuck in these totally nonsense, cruel attacks on people because of their gender, because of their identity. Uh, I'd rather we be focused on actually helping them live up to their potential. Congressman Ro Khanna of California, thank you, as always, uh, for coming to this show. Thank you, Jonathan.